Hello and welcome to the Hoop Circle. Today's special guest is coming all the way from upstate New York and it is the awesome Obaro Enne. Hello. Hello. Hi. You've been hooping since 2012 and how was it that you discovered hooping? So the way that I discovered hooping is that um, it was the day of a lunar eclipse and I had set the intention to just experience it out in nature. And since I was living in Los Angeles at the time, I decided to go experience it at, at a beach. And so I was there and then just as it goes, almost like magically these like hula hoopers just like showed up and they were having so much fun. You could just see it's, it's a common thing. You, you could see the joy in a hooper is not just face, but in their body when they're hooping and when they're really in their state of flow. And I wanted to know what that felt like. Uh, I wanted to experience that joy just in my mind, in my body and in my soul. And um, so just hanging around them. And then one of them extended that invitation to, to just like, oh, do you want to hoop? And I was like, yes, <laughs> you know? So um, then I accepted that invitation and I was just hooked ever since, uh, just feeling that joy in my body, in my mind, and then seeing what can happen just when you're in that state of flow. Um, I've been hooping ever since. Oh, that's fantastic. And I mean, you're well known for a lot of things within the hoop community. And one of them is that you are a Guinness World Record holder and you hold the record for hula hooping while doing traveling rings. Can you tell us a little about that? Uh, yeah, so um, I, I presently have one Guinness World Record for um, aerial uh, hooping. So it's traveling the rings while hooping. I actually have uh, three other world records with uh, organizations called, <laughs> right? It's called uh, Record Holders uh, Republic. Their process of getting records is, is a little bit different from Guinness. Um, so that's why it's, it's, it's just a different flow. And so that's why I was able to update mine with theirs a little bit sooner. I'm waiting to get confirmation from Guinness on those ones. Um, they involve hooping, they involve the rings. And um, it's interesting that this kind of resurfaces because someone was talking to me about a conversation. And um, I strongly recommend anyone, if there's something that you love to do in, in terms of you go into the afterlife and you are doing this thing forever and ever and ever, that's what you set a Guinness World Record for because um, it will change your mind, it will change your body, it will make you happier, it will make you healthier. The journey of achieving that record will open you up to communities and to, to people. And um, that's what it was like when I went out for my record. Uh, once again, it was another challenge that I accepted and it seemed impossible. It seemed impossible that I hadn't even been hooping for that long. It was only a couple months at that time. Oh, wow. But for the rings, I, I think I had been doing the rings for maybe like one or two years, possibly two years by that, that time. But then to combine the two into doing something uh, that seemed impossible, I wasn't the first person to travel the rings while hooping. And I remember when I saw someone else do it, I, it blew my mind. I, it, it, it seemed impossible. And then when I had that aha day where I actually discovered that I could do it, then I set that goal, that challenge that I was going to become one of the world's greatest at doing it. And um, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, having the record was great, but the journey that I went on in terms of the people that I met, how I had to change my life, um, I, I changed my eating habits. Um, uh, I started doing other types of fitness, uh, Pilates, yoga, meditation, uh, plant-based diet, uh, uh, just meeting other people, the things that I had to do to get that record uh, was a lot more beneficial. Well, that's fantastic. And are there any particular world records with hula hoops involved that you're trying to work towards at the moment? Yeah, I actually have a couple in queue. Uh, it's kind of, I think it's kind of like record holder taboo that you actually say what you're working on. But um, I, I, I have, a, <laughs> I, I, I do have a couple. Uh, there's um, there's one that I that I actually already broke, but I'm, honestly, I'm just waiting to hear back from from Guinness before I start running my mouth about it. So um, <laughs> we'll see. My my goal is to have a total of 13, and oh. I've just kind of yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I've just said it kind of as a life goal thing. It's something where the the thing about records there, there's a there's a community of record holders that I'm part of. And uh, it becomes a lifestyle. 
it's something where it's, it's not a rush or a panic that you're into. Um, it's almost like a hobby. And uh, there are a couple of people in my community who I'm encouraging, like, hey, what you're doing, uh, you do that all the time. Maybe you should get a record from that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I tell everyone to stay tuned and we'll see what happens next. Can I ask any of them to do with power tool hooping? Because this is what we've covered. <laughs> power tool. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely. So, <laughs> I actually, uh, believe it or not, I actually, that's one that I applied for and it's actually rejected because it said it was like too special. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it could be too special. Nice I, I applied to break a record for the most logs cut while hula hooping. And, um, because I I guarantee that if they said yes, that could be a record, I would have been done at it. Because um, um, just a lot of the work that I had to do this summer involved a lot of yard work. So one of my breaks while doing yard work was, oh, let me see, you know, let me hoop. And then it was, can I hula hoop as I'm doing this? Can I hula hoop as I'm using um, a weed whacker? Can I hula hoop as I'm using a chainsaw? Can I hula hoop as I'm using like a leaf blower? And um, <laughs> Chainsaw hooping by far. Kids, do not try this at home. <laughs> okay, it's not. It's 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 not very safe, but it, <laughs> but it's very fun, you know. So, <laughs> um, power tool hooping is definitely cool. Once they give me the okay on a couple power tool hooping things, like uh, I got some ideas, maybe sledgehammer. Guinness likes sledgehammer stuff, so maybe if I could figure out some like sledgehammer hoop moves, then uh, I'll, That's I'll definitely when you need to get foot hooping involved and ones where the hoop's far away from your hands. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, well, that's yeah, amazing. It's, uh... <laughs> and one of the other things that you've been doing uh, most recently is um, your plank hooping. Now, I struggle with planking at the best of times. At the start of the year, I was trying to do the the planking challenge. Um, and it lasted about three weeks and then I just failed and didn't stick to it. But um, plank hooping looks incredibly challenging on your core. How did you get into doing that and, and how are you finding that? Uh, surprisingly, or, or maybe not surprisingly, it's, um, as it turns out, that's, it's interesting how that's becoming like my new signature move and I'm very grateful for it. Uh, plank hooping, the story of it, it comes out of the whole world went into pandemic mode, everything was shut down, bars were shut down, clubs were shut down, gyms, studios were shut down. And, um, you know, I have, I have a homie in, in LA, in Los Angeles, California, we were on the phone and we was like, yo, like, what are we gonna do to stay fit? How, what are we gonna do to stay like motivated? It's almost like a level of accountability. We, we gotta do something. And, um, then another person in, in our fit family, in our community, we just kind of keep each other on top of our goals, uh, presented this plank challenge. And then, so of course the challenge came, well, can you do it while hooping? Which is a, that's a common hooper thing. Like, can you bake a cake while you hula hoop? Can you, <laughs> can you walk, can you go to sleep while you hula hoop? Right? So, so that challenge came to me and, and I actually did it. I was able to plank while being in, in while hula hooping. And I think that since that was such an accessible thing to do and ended up kind of going a little bit viral, that like there are people all over the world now. And I think by this point, I have someone in every continent who has tried plank hooping, which makes me uh, like really happy to know that I created a style of flow. Uh, it's accessible. It's a lot more accessible than traveling the rings while hooping. And, um, I think it kind of opens up an opportunity if you look kind of silly as you're doing it, because some people they're flopping as a fish, but they still get it done. But then <laughs> once you get it down, the challenge became, okay, where can you then go and plank hoop while hooping? So steps, walls, sculptures, it's, it's, that's become the next evolution of it. Where can you plank? That's fantastic. And were you into all of this fitness stuff and before you started hooping or how did you get into that? Um, I played sports in high school. So uh, I'm a firm advocate of athletics for, for youth. Um, it, it does great things for your mind, body and soul, which I advocate for. I was actually a very chubby kid. 
uh, until I started playing sports in high school and, and it helped me with my confidence. It helped me with just understanding how to use my body. Um, and then just after that, it kind of created a tone for just being body, body conscious and body aware and, and thinking about how I'm fueling my body and, and what I'm doing with that. Um, and, and, but then hooping, um, it, it was just a very different thing to me. Uh, if, if you asked me before I started hooping, if, if that was going to be my, my gateway into transforming um, my life into another level, I, I wouldn't have thought that it would have been that. Um, but I, I do other things. Um, I, I did uh, some yoga and some Pilates, and different forms of, of meditation. And going to the gym is always fun. And what size hula hoops do you have a preference with? Do you like using larger hoops or do you have like a standard size you like to use? Yeah, yeah um, well, so my, my trusty my, my trusty red hoop, this is my record setting red hoop right here. This is a 33 inch hoop and I like that for, for its uh, speed. It's also made out of a certain type of plastic so it, ha it has a weight and a density to it where um, when I hoop with it, um, it's, it's like I'm dancing with a person. And so it's a 33 inch, um, just, I guess some people would consider it a weighted hoop. And um, I think that's a, a great size when you're trying to do things that involve um, like core and feeling your core. Um, you just have to access it. Uh, I have other hoops. Uh, I have a really made out of, cause I make the hoops that I really, really use, I make all of them cause they're art pieces. Um, I have a really large hoop, it's about 69 inch who made out of the same material. And um, once again, that, that feels like dancing with a person. I think that's great when you're trying to do like full body motions. And, um, but th there are many hoops out there. So I think it all just depends on, on what, track, what type of dance you're, you're trying to do. No, definitely. And I think there's been, um, there's been a lot of trends within hooping in the last few years to go as small as possible and as light as possible, which is great for doing certain things and a lot of off body tricks, but you do lose a lot of that feeling when you're doing the on body core stuff that, you know, especially if you're then trying to add planking, like lifting your body up, anything like that. It's like a completely different experience when um, yeah. you can feel the hoop. And I feel like it gives you, if you're trying to do a lot more with on body hooping, you've got so many more options. You've got a bit more size and a bit more weight to it. And I think uh, people shouldn't feel pressured to go to tiny hoops. There's loads you can do with big weighted hoops. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't be prejudiced against the size of the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think every hooper should have a repertoire of, of different sizes that, that they like to flow with. And um, yeah, you, you, you just let the flow be your guide and, and rock with that. No, definitely. I think the only reason I really downsized my hoops was... Um, I live in Bristol in England and uh, everywhere I've lived have really small rooms. So the amount of things I'd broken in my <laughs> living room, I was like, okay, get rid of the television, uh, move back to the corner. And I was like, okay, if I go down another two inches, I can maybe smash less things and do a few more moves. Yeah. So that was uh, the main reason. But I, I've, I've kind of uh, stuck at about 32 inch hoop, especially for teaching, yeah. because when you're trying to teach a trick, you don't want it to be rapidly going past so people can't see what you're doing you want to have have enough time to to show them um, yeah. and in terms of kind of uh, fitness hoop stuff are there things that you'd advise people who are like okay i'm just gone into hooping and i really want to work on my core um are there some things you've really loved doing with kind of core hooping and uh, and fitness uh my number one thing that i tell everyone and um I want this to be a viral hashtag as well as just keep hooping. Like, like seriously, just just keep hooping, no matter what kind of trick you're trying to do or how um, how how new or, or or how much of a veteran you are at the game. Just keep hooping. Just it's it's like keep breathing, keep dancing, uh, keep living, keep loving. Just keep hooping uh, would be the number one thing that I would tell everyone to always remember. And then um, after that, so far as um, core, um, be very conscious about what you put into your core, um, because your your core is it's almost it's it's a, it's almost like another brain. It's like another organism. So 
you need to be able to connect with it. Uh, you need to be able to access the, the different muscles in it. There, there's a massive amount of, uh, of nerves and muscles. And you know, we have our fascia is all in this area. Um, our creative energy is in this area. Um, our, our, we have chakras in this area that we need to connect with. So it's more than, than just powering through it, like, oh, I want to have this amazing six pack, ah, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's also just like, how am I, how am I treating this energy center?